Hey gang, how y'all doing? Today we're going to talk about applications and programs. So, throughout this journey, throughout this course, we're going to be talking about applications and programs mostly used with uh, Microsoft operating systems. Just because, like we said in the last lecture, that Microsoft is the most popular operating system for now, that may change, but for right now it's Microsoft. So a lot of times the examples and the things that I discuss is going to be centered around the uh, Microsoft operating system. And just like in the last lecture, um, we talked about different things when we went through the Windows tour. We're going to go through a couple of those applications, all right? So I'm not going to take up too much of your time, so let's get straight into it. All right, so let's talk about productivity software. So a lot of this software is stuff that you've probably heard of before. For example, a word processing. Microsoft has Microsoft Word. Um, for spreadsheets, we got Excel. Now Excel, um, that's probably a program that you've heard of, but you may not have used that much. Um, a lot of people, uh, they like Excel, but they just uh, don't like using it, right? Because there's different formulas or different things. Actually, if you learn how to use Excel, you're going to probably be <laughs> the most popular person in your office because people are going to want you to make spreadsheets um, because Excel can make things um, really easy and make you more productive like the um, like the title says. So in Excel, you can actually, let's say that you own a business and you want to put every transaction that you've ever had, right? You can put that inside of a spreadsheet and then if you know the correct formula for the spreadsheet, it can tally up uh, the percentage of people that um, buy salami or the first, why the hell I say salami? I don't know, I don't even eat salami, but percentage of people that eat salami versus uh, the percentage of people that buy cigarettes versus so on and so forth, right? And show you how much you make daily, hourly, to the minute, to the second, depending on how you set up the um, formulas, right? Next up, of course, you use an email. It doesn't have to be Google, but um, Google is a really popular um, email provider. You got uh, Yahoo. You got Hotmail. I'm pretty sure you don't have Hotmail. You got uh, AOL. <laughs> you might have that. Um, but email is just how you um, send and receive electronic mail, right? I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with PDF viewers. So um, a PDF is just... Um, a booklet, a um, bunch of paperwork. Uh, it's, I'm trying to break this down as, as, as simple as possible. So Adobe is a digital um, book pretty much, right? So let's say that, or a PDF is pretty much a digital version of a physical thing, right? So I may have 10 pages of information. I can actually convert that into a digital form which can be a PDF and a PDF is just a digital version of um, a document all right so PDF viewer is just something that you can actually view digital documents that are in the form of a PDF and one of the most popular ones is Adobe okay remote software so we actually looked at that in the last lecture remote software is something that allows you to control a device that you actually don't have physical access to right so Windows has something called Remote Desktop and also Remote Assistance, right? So Remote Assistance is where somebody else can come in and take over your computer to help you out with stuff, right? So a lot of times if um, you call customer service, they may use Remote Assistance to actually go inside your machine to fix the problem. So they have to send, uh, send somebody to wherever you are. Uh, the reverse of that is that if you were um, at home, or you were at the office and you wanted to link to something that was at the house, you can actually use remote desktop. All you need is your IP address. What is an IP address? An IP address is just your address on the network, right? So just like every house needs an address so the mailman knows where to drop your packages, the same thing is, um, happens on the network. So you have to have an IP address so it knows where to send stuff. Makes sense? Perfecto. Next up. Let's talk about collaboration software, right? So, um, in today's space, a lot of times work is going to be done in a team environment. Maybe I do this section, you just do this section, and Suzanne does this section, right? So, one of those is uh, called SharePoint. So, SharePoint is an online workspace to where people can upload documents, upload projects, 
and have things all in an open space online. So I can do steps one through three, and then you can come in and say, oh, Dwayne already did steps one through three. Let me start on four and five. You complete four and five, and then Suzanne, whoever the hell that is, comes in and finishes the rest. Makes sense? So you collaborate online. And as long as you got an internet connection and have rights to the SharePoint site, you can do whatever you want to. All right. Uh, screen sharing. So screen sharing is a bunch of different varieties, but we're just going to um, focus on Google Hangouts because it's a pretty um, popular one. So with Google Hangouts, it's pretty much like uh, Skype or FaceTime. Only difference is not only can you see the person's face, but if they want to share a document, share a slideshow, share their screen so you can see what they're talking about, they can actually do that. All right. Next up is the Messenger. Uh, it just comes in a bunch of different varieties. You have it on Google. Uh, it's usually like a little green light next to your name and anybody that you know. It'll be a red light or a green light or a yellow light, and that represents available, online, on, uh, offline, so on and so forth. So Instant Messenger is exactly what it sounds like. As soon as you send it, the other person should receive it, right? So Facebook Messenger is one. We got um, Google Messenger, Yahoo Messenger. There's a bunch of different ones, okay? So collaboration software, SharePoint, Google Hangouts, Facebook Manager. And just one more time, I'll bring up a few other ones. And just remember, a lot of times when I point out stuff, it's just the most popular, right? Just to keep things simple, doesn't mean that that's the only option. All right. Next up, utility software, anti-malware. So anti-malware is nothing more than antivirus. All right. So malware is just short for malicious software, stuff that you... Um, don't want your computer because it's going to do something crazy to it, right? So anti-malware, you can use stuff like uh, Norton uh, antivirus, you got malware bytes, you got McAfee. There's different ones that you can use, right? And the purpose of antivirus is to get rid of viruses and malware, right? So it'll scan your computer for any kind of viruses, any crazy stuff, any anomalies, anything that seems weird, and it'll quarantine it stop it and if you have it set up to eradicate and delete it it'll delete it but at the minimum it'll tell you hey man this software that you downloaded or this picture that you downloaded is doing something weird you might want to take a look at it uh, next up uh, you got maintenance so in your journey um, you're going to need performance monitors right so if you have a performance monitor it'll tell you okay what programs are intensive on the cpu what's draining the cpu um what is eating all the RAM, so on and so forth. So a performance monitor to tell you, okay, is the device cooling properly? Is it does it have enough RAM? Is it working fast enough? When is it under the heaviest load? So when you actually are looking over an entire network or your system administrator, or if you are really in the tech field, this comes even more important because you can see exactly, okay, at three o'clock seems like the server or the devices are underneath a heavier load. So on and so forth. But it's a little bit easier when you just have your PC, your laptop, or your cell phone to track the performance, all right, to see what's going on. Uh, compression software. So a popular thing for that is WinZip. The purpose of compression software is making something big smaller, right? For one, so you can download it faster or that you can send it faster, right? So if something is 500 gigabytes, um, instead of it being 500 gigabytes, maybe we can press it down to one or two, or maybe even get it down to megabytes. So compression software makes a big file smaller. Make sense? Great. All right, so these are some of the common file types that you've probably seen uh, before. So for documents, audio, images, video, executables, and compress. So for file types, right, it's going to be your name dot whatever. It's going to be uh, homemade recipes dot whatever, right? So it's going to be the file name and then the file type. So the file name is whatever you name it, then there's going to be a dot, and at the end, there's going to be what type of file it is, right? The reason that you might want to be abreast of that and want to know it, just so you know what kind of file it is, right? Because let's say, for example, documents and executables, there's a really big difference, right? So if something ends in dot doc, that's a Microsoft Word document, meaning that you're going to click on it and just a document is going to open, right? Now, the difference between that and executable is that it actually does something. So if something says dot exe, 
That means that once you click it, it's going to actually execute something, right? So just to give you a tidbit, just a sprinkle of cybersecurity, sometimes people will um, disguise files as regular documents, but a dead giveaway would be that the document ends in .exe, all right? So just remember, an executable is something that's going to execute um, something, right? It's going to do something to your computer. So you want to make sure when you download stuff that you're making or that you're paying attention to that, okay? Um, so we got documents, audio, images, video, executables, and compressed. And each one of these is just a different type, right? So documents, we said doc, doc. Microsoft Word, PPT is PowerPoint, PDF is um, going to be opened up in Adobe. And another thing, depending on the file type, depends on what program on your actual operating system opens the file type. And if you don't have the program that can actually open that file type, it won't open it. It'll tell you like, hey, this operation can't be completed because blah, 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 blah. All right, makes sense. We got images. You probably heard of a GIF, a JPEG, PNG, video. We got MP4, uh, WMV. WMV is just a Windows Media, uh, Windows Media uh, Viewer. Uh, we got executables, like I said, exe, back, app, and then compress. Remember we said compress is just making something big into something smaller. So long story short, if you see something to say dot .zip, oh, that's a compressed file. If I open it, whatever it says, say, say it says only 500 megabytes. When I actually open it, it may be 5 megabytes. Okay, the uncompressed version may be 5, uh, five um, mega, uh, gigabytes, okay? Executables, if we see .exe, .bat, we know it actually does something. Video, it just means that's the type of format that video was saved in. Images, that's just the type of image it is. Audio, that's, a, that's how the audio was saved. Then documents, self-explanatory, okay? All right, gang, so today we went over uh, applications and programs. Um, if you want to follow us on YouTube, you should subscribe. Follow us on uh, Instagram, like us on Facebook, and tweet us at Master IT. We actually, we actually also have a podcast. It's on Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, wherever you can find podcasts. All right. So this was um, day two of the IT Fundamentals course. If you're looking for any other courses, Security Plus, Net Plus, A Plus, uh, CCNA, CEH, or Career Coaching, head over to itmasterski.com. And we'll look out for you. Other than that, I'll see you in class.